Um, today we're going to be uh, discussing about uh, a sl uh, floating slab thickened edge floor. It's a monolithic pour and we did a little bit of prep work. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff that we did. Um, the first thing we did was when we first laid the ground out is of course we had to take out the topsoil to give us a base to work from and then we put a base down and then to determine where our building is going to be it was based on a set of blueprints and the local uh, bylaws referring to um, the property lines so for in this case here we're four feet from the fence to the north and we're 25 feet from the south and we're within the parameters of this uh, floating slab it's going to be a garage and we're also there's a certain distance we have to be from the existing occupant house on this property this is considered an accessory building, a uh, detached garage. Part of this is going to be, one of the biggest things that we have here is we had to establish our first run. So putting the form up, we, we uh, laid out our first long wall and we worked backwards to the, found, to the, uh, the property line. In this case here, our garage is 24 by 36. So we laid out our 36 wall and we did our 345 to determine to make a right angle triangle to make a square. So if you follow me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook on to the outside edge of the form. Now we have to factor in that the form is an inch and a half thick. So I'm going to go 32 feet. So as you see here, we are 32 foot one and a half, as you can see. So we lay this out at 32 feet. And then the other side here, again, we, we hook on the outside, factoring in the inch and a half. As you can see, we are at 24 foot one and a half. So, where does the 32 and the 24 come into? This is what we call a three, four, five triangle. If you do uh, Pythagoras theorem, the ideal triangle is if your if your base is four and your vertical on the triangle is three. The hypotenuse from corner to corner becomes five exactly. So that's what we call a three, four, five triangle. And in carpentry, we use this an awful lot. In, in construction, we use this an awful lot to lay out a building. So we've got 32, 24. So the hypotenuse in this case is gonna be 40. So that this is the same triangle, but it represents eight times bigger. The bigger the triangle, the more accurate you're going to be, which represents a 90 degree corner which squares are built. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook onto this, this angle here, like so. Okay, so that's the thing you can put on. So for a building to be square, as you can see, it's 40 feet exactly. So this makes our square. From there, we are turning around, as you can see, we have 40 feet zero. So there's our triangle. Okay, now if you look here and look, observe, once we do that, we've created our 90 degree triangle. We have our form on the north side, full. We have our form on the back side, which is 24. Now, to bring our third form in place, all we have to do is measure parallel across 24 feet in intervals, staggering, to run parallel. And then we do the same thing on the, the length on, to fill in the back. As we prepare the ground here, 
what we're doing here is we're making a thickened edge slab. Now this slab here is going to have a heated floor. So we have a 12 inch deep edge with a footing that is 12 inches by 12 inches for a footing. And then the floor blends into it. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a shelf here and we're going to have this dirt pile built up. So we're bringing in six inches of fill and we're going to compact it. And then we're going to put two inches of styrofoam SM on it. Okay. Now prior to uh, getting the site laid out, I did what we call profile leveling. And I started at the street and I came down the driveway to where the garage is going to be. Because we have to determine the height of the garage to the height of the street, allowing for landscaping, allowing for water drainage. Because it's got to be higher so the water can flow away from the building. So to determining that, I did a series of shots to get my profile to determine the actual height. And what we determined was is where it is right now. Um, I will show you a, an overview of it using an aerial. We will be turning around and now, now that I've done that profile leveling set up, now I've gone to a stick and what we did is we did a story pole. So as you can see here, if I take this off, we've got, we calibrated to the top of the concrete. So from the top of the concrete, down to the top of the fill compacted and then as you can see here i've got an inch so what i've got is what i've got loose fill height so this is six inches and then in the six inches what's going to happen is we're going to have to put two inches of of styrofoam and it's going to be rated as type three or type four because it's going to be under the floor and there's going to be four inches of concrete with rebar and piping so as you can see here i've got so I've got, again, the top of the, the top of the concrete, the top of the slab. I've got where the top of the fill has to be. And up here, this is the bottom of the footing. Okay. As you can see, the bottom of the footing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my laser level here. I'm going to set it at the loose fill as we bring fill in. Okay. Before compacting. And we're going to go around and we're going to take a shot. Now, as you can see, I turn this on. If you look now, at this sensor, it's, it's two inches, an inch above, an inch below. So what happens is, if I place this in the laser level, if it's too low, it'll have an error up. And you listen for the sound. When it is level, you get that. If it's up too high, the beeping is faster. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go over here, and as we progress with the work, we will take shots and we will rake it around. So as you can see, I'm going to take a shot here. So this here, that gives me, as far as height, I'm loose, right there. So there's our height of our loose fill before compacting. And we're going to do this throughout the whole um, area when we bring the fill in and we prep this ground for the uh, insulation. So later on, we'll do a series on when we install the insulation, the piping, and the rebar. Okay, thank you.